Mike Staley Podcast. Welcome to Cafe Anyway. 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 And this is FF episode 1631. I'm your host, Mike Matthews at 1631. We are bringing you the Mike Staley Podcast show live from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcast Valley, Mont. Today, Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere the Engineer. I drive to work at 4.30 in the morning, sometimes have to stop and get gas, which is awesome in the Bay Area. Mike's Daily Podcast. Because that seems to be the only time when the gas station is, like, empty. Except this week, every morning there's been... Mike's Daily Podcast. A bunch of people at the gas station, and it was the same this morning. And then there was something that came at me like a warning, and that was, as I was getting ready to go, there was a guy filling up his gas next to me, and so I look over, and he's just staring at me. At 4.30 in the morning, Mike's Daily Podcast. You know how people do that? They put the gas pump, the gas tank, and they're just sitting there on the side of the car and just staring at you? Mike's That ain't creepy. Daily Podcast. That ain't creepy at all. Podcast. Thanks, sir, for creeping me out at 4.30 on a Wednesday morning. What the hell? Is you blind? I mean, do not. Don't just stare at people. Come on. I know you might find me attractive. I want to do a little thing with you. I know you might find me a little bit. All right, all right, all right. A thing. You know, like, like I'm kind of a hot stuff. But still, break that magic. And look away. Look away, look away, look away. Like Chicago said, look who walked in. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Shelly Stewart, get shop supervisor. I don't know why people would find you attractive. Uh huh. Thanks, Shelly. Look who else walked in. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Shelly, that was extremely rude. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just being honest. Wow. That's. If that's honesty, who needs it? No more. I don't. Get that away from me. Hey, but it's great to have Shelly Shuhart, the most annoying woman ever, to be here today at Cafe Anyway. Mike Matthews, that's like not true. I'm just being honest. Hey, it's like that Outcast song. And here's today's podcast picture. That Outcast song. I'm just being honest. Wow, Shelly's being mean today. No, I'm not. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Hey, the Think Uns have liked a bunch of my tweets lately. The Thick thick Uns, which I keep wanting to call them the Think Uns. And I think they're from North Carolina. They're a fun band. But there is a great picture of my dog, Basil the Boxer, from yesterday. We went to Fairmont Ridge. And as we were th- walking up the hill, it's kind of a steep hill. and He's... Well, so there's this guy I know named Mark. No, not that Mark. The Mark that passed away is someone else completely. Which I was having a lot of thoughts about Mark uh, uh, last evening. As I was trying to... I could not get to sleep. I got to bed as early as I could because I wake up so early. And I'm lying there in bed. And I was thinking about back to Mark and how the guy was tenacious the guy I worked with, you, if there was something, and a, a goal, an agenda he was working for, he would do everything and anything to get to it. And I remember one time there was a Christmas party or we were doing an on-air Christmas concert at this place called The Lobster Trap in Oxnard at the end of Peninsula Drive, where I actually got to vote one year for one Bill Clinton in 1992. I voted for him. And, and and then I, it was like the first time I ever voted for someone for president and that person actually won. So that was interesting. So there I was at the lobster trap. But this was around Christmas. And not during election time. And it, it, during Christmas time, what they would do, it, uh, they'd try and get like a bunch of artists to show up and perform. And then we'd raise money for St. Jude's or something like that. And we had, they were country artists. This was a country station. They were not the most well-known. But there was this one guy who had an amazing voice named Ray Vega. 
I was a huge fan. And I think I had interviewed him before. So I had spoken to him and he came back. So he's like, hey, my, or I was Matt back then, Matt Michaels. Hey, Matt. And there was a song he had come out with called All I Want to Do is Remember When or Remember When, I think is what it was called. And it had this cool little hook, little chorus. Na, 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 na. All I want to do is remember when. Yeah, that's a great chorus, isn't it? Isn't it awesome? Just rivals that of I'm as free as a bird now. No. But yeah, it was not it did become it did not become a hit. It was not a big song. But I liked the hook anyway. And I said to Ray, You're gonna be performing that song by yourself on stage? And he said, Yeah. I go, Do you need me to do you want me to sing backup vocals? Backup vocals? On the chorus and Ray was Yeah, that would be great. And we practiced outside a lobster trap, like on this little bench. And he had his guitar and he's he's like, okay, so it's gonna go like this. No, no, no. And he and he goes and he and he gave me like the harmony part. So because I'm an idiot with harmony, so I'm just oh, okay, so I sing that part. And we did it live on the radio and in front of five people that had showed up. <laughs> it was in the morning, so not that many people showed up. At the Lobster Trap Which had a free buffet that morning For people that showed up And they had some dang good food I used to go there with my mom For happy hour We I don't know how it worked out I had a schedule Where my mom and I Oh and she had Mondays off Because she owned a video store Yes I'm just I'm throwing out all these facts right now I could go into all kinds of little weird, weird Little explanations of stuff But just take it at face value That's the truth What happened and there was the, uh, a wonderful buffet that they'd have for happy hour with, where you could make these awesome like steak sandwiches and stuff. It was the bomb to throw out an old term. And yeah, so we would, we, we did this performance at the Christmas, Lobster Trap, fun time. And then afterwards, I need to go home and take a nap because usually I did nights and I was up till three in the morning. And, and so I had gotten up extra early Like I think I maybe got three hours sleep So I could be at this thing And Mark goes Hey man what are you doing right now And I said I, Well I'm going to go home and take a nap And I didn't live too far away from the lo- lobster trap As I recall He goes oh no no you should stay up here Take some guarana And I go, I go no He would not let it go Until I took the freaking guarana It was like he was just This mad Mad promoter of Garana, a pusher man of, for Garana. So I took the damn Garana and I couldn't take a nap. So uh, I had to take a nap because there was the crisp, the company Christmas party. And at the time, we were owned by these two guys. One guy was really nice, the other guy was a jerk. And everybody just bowed down and kissed the feet of this guy. He had been in radio a long time. He was this old guy, and he would walk around the office, and not uh, you'd say hi to him, and he'd just ignore you. One of those jerks. What a, if I say hi to you, you should say hi back, or, or just kind of go, you know, nod your head or something. And he did no, nothing. Anyway, he was going to give, he gave a speech, apparently, at this Christmas party every year. Well, it turned out that was the last year he gave a speech. Not because he died, which he's probably dead, but... <sighs> Anyway, he, <laughs> cafe anyway, he gave a speech anyway, and I wanted to hear it. For whatever reason, I wanted to actually hear it. I didn't even know what he sounded like when he talked. So I wanted to go, well, I couldn't make the, the, the party on time because I finally did nod off thanks to the Garana keeping me up. I finally fell asleep. I woke up. Oh my God, I'm late to the party. I get there and I just miss his speech. So... That was one of the little, what would you call it, residual fire or, or, uh, and, you know, just not a good byproduct of Mark's tenaciousness, if you got involved in the tenaciousness. Mike, why didn't you just tell him no? I don't want any Garana. You could, he didn't take no as an answer. It was one of those things. So, I can only imagine how tough Mark was with the uh, I think he had cancer how tough he was fighting it and he probably lasted a lot longer than he would have usually and I can imagine 
towards the end, and I thought about this last night. This is what I was lying awake thinking about. How he, at some point, realized, and I know this about Mark, he would finally get the point. And he finally realized, I'm not going to win this. And he probably said, I need to get things straight with the people that are going to be around after I'm gone. So, I, I'm... I don't know this for sure. I haven't spoken to anyone about this, but I'm pretty sure he would have spoken to his wife and set everything, everything that she needed, you know, just to make sure everything would be okay when he was gone. Because I know this about Mark, and I know how this guy wouldn't... He could climb walls. He was a tough, tough dude. And the Garana thing just made me, just made me remember that. It's crazy, the Garana. Do they even make that anymore? What is it? What is that? I know my very herbologist type listeners will fill me in at 336mm daily. That's 336mm daily. You can also go to the website mikesdailypodcast.com. This suddenly became a commercial for my website, which nobody ever goes to. But mikesdailypodcast.com. It was a lot of fun as I drove into work this morning and listened to this show that's a national show and this guy he takes calls well at that time in the morning it's 4 30 in the morning and people are calling in from the midwest because they're already awake they've been awake for a couple of you know it's they're three hours ahead or two hours ahead and these it's always men that call in and they were calling about facebook and it's well i've been hacked into 12 times because of facebook they hacked into my phone, my refrigerator. They stole all my food. I don't trust Facebook. I'm deleting it tomorrow. You know, we have a basic responsibility to protect people's data. And if we can't do that, then we don't deserve to have the opportunity to serve people. I'm going to delete it now. And they never do. They keep it. Kristen Bell. So my lovely lady friend DT turned me on to Kristen Bell. And, or, well, I know who she is, but... That she apparently has this thing about sloths. The animal. Sloths. She goes completely ape bleep over them. She thinks they're... Awesome. She cries when she gets around a sloth or if a sloth is near. And she becomes super, like, excitable. Excited. And she's already as cute as a freaking button. And then she does this whole... I get cry and I cry. And it's on YouTube. Apparently it went viral and everything. It's just... It's, I, you know, it's funny, but it's also in the back of your mind, you're thinking there might be something psychological she should get fixed here. She should talk to someone about this. This is kind of weird to get that nuts about an animal. I mean, I like dogs, but I don't go, oh my God, oh my God there's a dog right there. Oh, Basil. <laughs> I, good God, she cries. She, she falls apart. She fell apart on Ellen talking about it. It's nuts. It's it's nuts. You're nuts. They're, and nuts. And he's nuts! They're nuts! They know nothing! My lady friend and I ran into at 21st Amendment when we saw my friend Kevin, addendum with Kevin. There was a musician that was playing there. And he, nice guy. But I'm not into the whole overly pushy musician thing. I've got some overly pushy musician friends and I'm not into it anymore. I get it. You play music. I get it. You got to self promote, but like, I, I don't, I don't do it. I don't like every set. When I meet someone, hi, I'm Mike Matthews. You should listen to my podcast. I think you find out that I do a podcast when I meet you in person. And you, you know, if you don't know, I do a podcast. Uh, you, you don't find that out for about three weeks. Well, I, actually, uh, my, Lovely lady friend DT found out I did a podcast within, within about five minutes. But it came up naturally, is what I'm saying. I hate being pushy about stuff. And she and I were discussing making a... When you make a resume, that's your time to shine and to talk about yourself. And it's fun. But some people, that's all they do is talk about themselves. I got a friend... Well, he's not... like. Well, I guess he's a friend. We've known each other a long time. Oh my God, he pushes himself constantly. But the pushy musician, it just, he was, yeah, and if you don't see me in this band, I'm going to be at this place, a little bit of this place. He was a nice guy, but next thing I know, I'm liking his Facebook page because he's gone into my phone. 
But I'm going to delete my Facebook because I don't trust them. They hacked into my refrigerator. Drop the the, just Facebook. My lady friend and I also watched Lucy Worsley. Lucy Worsley is the British lady I told you about who is uh, blonde and just really cute to watch. She's so funny. And we were watching this thing called like the the history of dancing, and it was it was hilarious. Uh, dancing cheek to cheek, and oh, liberty! There, Full sex appeal. But when the diarist Samuel Pepys and his wife Elizabeth let a dashing young dancing master into their house, they discovered a darker side to the... Yeah, that's her when she talks like that. Oh, love that accent. Okay, so yeah, we watched that. It was hilarious. The Devil's Work was the name of that episode one. And it's on YouTube is why I'm pushing this. Lucy Worsley, you can look up all of her. She's got a bunch of documentaries About England And I've talked about her before But I just thought I would mention that once again And the Let's see Oh John Meacham The historian Is all over Everything I look at lately For some reason He's on all these TV talk shows and stuff I think he's Bashing Trump a little bit Or a lot I don't know exactly All I know is that He's the guy From the John Ken Burns Documentaries And He's they, when they get the historians on the Ken Burn things, they you know they've practiced a zillion times before they go on camera, and they always have them in a nice wood cedar room with their comfy leather couch or chair they sit on, and they and they talk and they talk really softly like this. Theodore Roosevelt meant more to the United States in that summer of 1904 than anyone could have possibly imagined. I am drinking aged scotch now. And he has this, so he's been in this Ken Burns documentary and he just has, when I see him I think of low lighting Ken Burns, big words that you don't use in typical conversation that you would find in a history book, in a history book, and that's how you say it, history book. And then you go, I am done reading this book because I don't know what this word means and I'm too lazy to look it up. So, in in summation, Garana. But yeah, I'm seeing John Meacham all over the place. I do not know why I wrote down the word. Oh, that back to really quick, Fairmont Ridge and Basil the Boxer as we go outside a cafe anyway where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. We're walking up the hill... And Basil, you know, takes a little bit longer. And I see this other mark. Not to the, not the mark I spent most of the podcast talking about again today. But this other mark, he's got a great... Um, and, and the first mark, of course, has passed away, so I wouldn't see him. But the other mark has a dog shelter or a dog uh, daycare thing. Like a kennel type thing. Anyway, I see him, Cafe Anyway. And he's got his great dog, daddy who's like a huge Connie Corso, brindle-colored, beautiful dog. And Anyway, Cafe. Anyway. anyway. And Basil's walking up the hill, and he's going slower. And Mark goes, how old is Basil now? And I said, 10. And he goes, almost 10. And he goes, wow, he's kind of hinky, isn't he? He said, hinky. So Basil has a little trouble getting up this hill. But then, like, the rest of the time when we were on more level parts, he's walking around, jumping, running. Well, he's not jumping, but he's moving a lot faster. So, hinky is this word I didn't know of. Hinky. Okay. Thank you. And somebody there goes, hey, it's Podcasting Mike. That was with the group. I see these group of dog walkers quite a bit. But, I, you know, I just, I don't need to go to Fairmont Ridge that often. Once in a while is okay. There's a Dodd Frank rollback going on. Uh, Zuckerberg upsets Europe, apparently. Mark Zuckerberg. Back to the Facebook thing. Oh, the U.S. Congress yesterday approved a bill aimed at loosening regulations covering thousands of banks. Oh, lovely. And that's the... Oh, I get... Yeah, let's wrap up the show. 
We can get to more political things next time, but I don't have any time left. I'm done. So next show, we will have the wonderful Benita, the scrum fiddle player, and the brewmaster. And maybe Shelly in a future episode will be nicer to me. Sorry, Mike Matthews. I'm a little crabby today. That's all right. We can be crabby. That's what life is about. Being crabby. Or not being. Just be, you know, lobster trap is what it is. Back to that theme of lobsters and lobster, lobsters and crus- crustaceans. Yeah. Enjoy your Wednesday. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.